Okay, so we're talking about randomized block design. When the objective is to compare more than two populations, the experimental design that decreases the variability within the samples is called a randomized block design. Block designs and experiments are similar to stratified designs for sampling. Both are meant to reduce variation among the subjects. We just use different names because they were developed in different places. But the main idea is the same. Blocking allows more precise overall conclusions because of systematic differences due to gender or some other characteristic can be removed. A block is a group of experimental units that are similar in some way that affects the outcome of the experiment, the response. In a block design, the random assignment of treatments is, is done separately within each block. So we create the blocks and then randomly assign the treatments. Rather than treating the subjects as if they were a single pool, we split the subject population. Blocks are used to control the effects of some extraneous variable, like smoking, cholesterol level, weight, age, etc., by bringing that variable into the experiment so that some of the variability in the experiment can be reduced. If needed, we choose a blocking variable based on the variable that most highly correlates or has the strongest association with the response variable in this experiment. So let's take a look at our first one. An agronomist wishes to compare the yield of five wheat varieties. The field in which the experiment will be carried out increases in fertility from north to south and can be broken into eight blocks with similar soil composition, nutrients, and moisture level. Outline an appropriate design for this experiment. Identify the explanatory response variables, the experimental units, treatments, and why does blocking create, uh, affect the experiment. So let's take a look at this. We first need to um, make our block that we have. So we need to start off with that. So let's go ahead and and create our little field that we have. So here's our field that we're going to use. Okay, so now they tell us that they can be, break it into five blocks based on the fertility. So the fertility increases as we go from north to south. So we got more fertile here, less fertile down here. So think about this. If we just do a completely randomized design, I could end up with some blocks up here or some of the five wheat varieties all up here. And like we saw with a uh, stratified sample with the corn when we looked at that, the ones that are up here are going to grow more than the ones that are down here. So if by randomness one of my wheat varieties is more concentrated in this half, it's going to grow more, not necessarily because the wheat variety, maybe, or maybe it's because of the fertility of the land. That's the thing that we can't know. And so we have a confounding variable in there if we don't block. So let's see how we're going to do this with blocking. So first they tell us it can be broken into eight blocks with similar soil composition. So let's create our eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so we got our eight blocks. So if we think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to randomly assign the treatments into each of our blocks. Okay, so we have five wheat varieties, so we're going to create five plots in each one of these two. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to go to the first block and I'm going to randomly pick which ones are going to go, which wheat variety will go in each one of these. Then I'll do the same thing here. Which of the five wheat varieties will go in each plot? So each block will have one, two, three, four, five of the wheat varieties. So let's do this. Let's take our nice little hat because we have some practice with the hat. So let's take a nice little hat. We'll put numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the hat. And now I'm going to use a random number generator. I'm going to use the hat. I'm going to pull out the first number. Okay, my first number is 3. Okay, so the first plot in the first block will get 3. Next number out, let's say, is a 1. All right, this, so that gets 1. Next number out, let's say, is a 5. Next number out gives us a 4. And then the last one's got to be two. So notice, all of the treatments are in the first block. Now I'll repeat this same process for block two. So I go to block two. Let's say the first number out this time is a four. Next number out this time is a three. So now we do the same thing for block two, block three, block four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then after the time, we'll go back and compare all the experiment that we have. Okay, let's write this out now. So now that we drew out the picture of what we want to do, let's go ahead and write it out the way that we'd want to do it. Okay, so first, let's create the eight blocks that we need based on the, based on the location. We choose location to block on. 
because location most closely associates with the wheat growth because of the fertility, nutrients, moisture, etc. So those that's why we're going to choose the block. In each block, we will create five plots for one for each wheat variety. Using a hat, we will go to the first block and put the numbers one through five in the hat. Mix well and draw without replacement. The number pulled out will be the wheat variety in the first plot in the first block. Continue until all five plots in the first block have a different wheat variety. Repeat this for Repeat this for the remaining seven blocks. Then compare the yield of the wheat to see which is the best. Okay, so our explanatory variable is going to be the wheat varieties. Our response is the yield. Our experimental units are going to be the each plot, because that's what we signed the treatment to. And the treatments, we've got five each of the five varieties. Um, next question, why does blocking help reduce the possibility of extraneous variables? Well now, each block is as similar as possible, so each treatment will get the same soil quality. Therefore, the only difference in the two treatment groups, in the five treatment groups, is the variety of wheat. Awesome. So there's our first one that we looked at. Now let's try a couple more.